Papa. Ah. Hello. Good evening. Oh, um, my name is Jocelyn, and um, uh, Jocelyn Noah actually is my name. Uh, this is my first time to be on a show like this. Uh, it was a surprise uh, that was given to me by Mr. Ade, and I'm so grateful to be uh, in your midst tonight. So tonight we're going to talk about more of uh, the struggle, and I've got some people in our midst uh, who are here on the show with me. So I'll be anchoring the show tonight. So please permit me to um, to say hi to everyone and for giving me the privilege and the platform to be to be here with you guys. Uh, I have with me uh, in the house. I will just go ahead to let the guys introduce uh, introduce themselves. Um, I have. Um, I will go with Mr. Simon. Please, you can just uh, a quick introduction to the. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, moderator. Uh, I am Mr. <laughs> Simon Ekpa and uh, Biafra agitator uh, based in Europe. Good to have you. Um, it's you. good to have you on board. Uh, and I have the next person with me is Uche. Uche, could you please introduce yourself to the viewers? Okay. Thank you, Jocelyn. And um, I really thank you all for making this possible. My name is uh, Uche Akwari. I'm in San Francisco, California. I'm a beer friend. Good to have, uh, good, good to have you all. And our viewers, um, I will go, I'm about to start the show. <laughs> um, actually, we're a little bit late uh, due to technical issues. So I hope you guys will bear with us while we uh, kick off with the program tonight. Um, this platform is actually given to us by Mr. Ade from um, uh, Heritage Multimedia TV, uh, just for us to talk about Biafra and what is in it for the, uh, the, uh, the Biafran struggles. So we'll be hearing more um, more of this uh, from Uche and then from uh, from Simon. They are actually good. They are working hand in hand to make sure we actualize this Biafra uh, we all are fighting for. So I uh, will just uh, roll over to Simon to please. Um, just give us an in, like an insight of what he thinks about Biafra and what we actually uh, tend to gain once the Biafra is realized. Please, Mr. Simon. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, moderator. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, we are sick and tired of a country called Nigeria. And uh, before I go further. I would like to, at this point, thank the leader, our leader, the leader of the movement of Biafra, the leader of the liberation of Biafra, in the person of Mazi Namdikano. Mazi Namdikano has actually waking a lot of souls, not just from the Biafra land, but across Nigeria state. So I would want to give use this opportunity to acknowledge his resilience work on this uh, on this uh, movement so why we need biafra is because nigeria can never work again nigeria has become a redeemable country and this evening i am going to throw more light i'm going to let those and the entire world know those watching us and the entire world know why we think and believe that Nigeria can never work again. The impunity that is going on in Nigeria, so-called Nigeria Constitution today. I am going to pieces some section of the... We got the ethic, we got the, the, the robots that we actually make. So what do you think um, people are about to gain once we realize the Biafra nation? At this point, I will be touching some areas which will explain what we are going to get or what we are going to 
again as France. You know, people think once Biafra comes, we are going to be hungry, nothing will work. How do how are we sure that we are going to be able to govern ourselves or do? So I am actually going to touch on that area because there are so much about this struggle that people don't understand, even those on the sidelines inside it. So we are just all shouting, we want Biafra. They don't even know what we stand to gain. So I will be touching on those areas. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, viewers. Um, actually, we'll also be taking some calls later on in the show. Um, but that will be towards the tail end of the of the show because we've got limited time, though we're a little bit late. So we won't be taking much of your time because I believe some of you will want, uh, want to go to bed on time as well. So, Mr. F um, Mr. Simon, I uh, would just need to elaborate more, okay? Because uh, yesterday, Mr. Simon the Colonel was, because when he was online, I felt the anger in him. I felt he was actually crying because my heart actually broke. And uh, when I saw the video of the, 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 the Biafran ch uh, children that were starved to death, you know, it's a kind of a heartbreaking to see such things. Because, I, because I, for me, I see my nephews and nieces in those states, okay? And then I actually understand the point of Biafrans when they are a little bit, when they are angry or aggressive because of what they experienced in the past so the video he showed yes uh, Mr. Uh, Maznam the Kano showed yesterday actually proved a, a, a huge of a point okay and also we're going to talk about the, the economic situation of uh, the Biafran region how has this affected the Biafrans um, in total as a whole or I mean as a whole how do you see um, how do you how, uh, how how is this going to be of any help you know when we get Biafra is there anything that uh, we need to do to make our people understand that this is we're actually towing the right path you understand me so I would just need yes. to talk to people back home and everywhere, every, um, everybody around the globe, let them understand the, 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 the struggles um, and the efforts you guys are putting in to make sure we actualize this Biafra. And also, how do you carry them all along? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Can I talk now? Yes, please go ahead. All right. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Um, the issue of uh, Biafra and the issue of uh, the, uh, the video you, you saw on uh, Mazi Nambikano's wall and uh, the video of these uh, children, innocent children dying in their millions, uh, there is nothing anybody can do for that experience to just disappear from our mind. Uh, that was a genocide committed against uh, Biafrans. That was a war crime committed against Biafrans. That was a crime against humanity committed against Biafrans. And like you know, nobody, nobody has been tried for war crime in Nigeria before. And that is because we all know when what gave birth to the ICC, the International Criminal Court and all that, you know, when it was after all this, uh, all this atrocity happened, and of course, they cannot go back and start the crime that uh, that they committed in those in those days. Nigeria become a very peculiar case because of the reason that is best known to international community. Nobody want to investigate that case, and of course, we try to forget the atrocity committed against Biafrans, and on daily basis since 1967 nigeria government has continued to wage war against biafras and there is something i would want to explain to nigerians today especially those who do not who do not understand the rottenness in nigeria system we cannot begin to discuss these issues without picking it from the fundamental, from the beginning, from the roots. And what do I mean by that? I will start by going, uh, coming from the constitutional contest. The constitutional contest means the fraud called the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended. Why we are doing this awareness is to make sure everybody is carried along. Why we are making this awareness is to make sure we try to enlighten people 
especially those who have been deprived the opportunity to read and learn the history of Nigeria. Nigeria government dubiously, scandalously, and on purpose removed history in school curriculum in Nigeria. And for that singular reason, a lot of people are being misled into believing a lot of fallacies, into not even believing that Nigeria can disintegrate. So the reason we are coming online almost on daily basis is to try to orientate our people and try to carry them along, especially letting them know why they must reject Nigeria. I want to start making reference from the sections, from some of the sections of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended. Hmm. Today, when you look at the appointment of the so-called the presidency of Nigeria, when you look at what is going on in Nigeria today, especially in this pandemic, would you say that Nigeria have constitution? The answer is no. I will start from the section, section 14 of the Nigeria constitution, 1999 constitution as amended. Section 14, I have to read the constitution so that I will not misquote the constitution so that I will not act and subtract anything from the Constitution. Now, Section 14 of the 1999 Constitution as amended state, and I quote, The Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be a state based on principle of democracy and social justice. Two of that Section 14, Section 14, subsection 2 of that constitution say, it is hereby accordingly declared that, A, I am now reading section 14, subsection 2A of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. The, the sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from one government through this constitution derive all its powers and authority. The B, subsection 2B of this constitution states as follows. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of the government. And C, section 14, subsection 2C of the same constitution state as follows. The participation by the people in their government shall be ensured in accordance with the provision of this constitution. Now, let me take these sections that I have just presented to you bit by bit and explain to you how this constitution has been infringed, how the constitution has been breached by the people that are in power today which are Fulanese who do not know anything about the wordings of this constitution, of this fraud called constitution. Now, in this section 14, subsection 1, it says, the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be a state based on principle of democracy and social justice. Would you look at what is going on in Nigeria today and you say that the government has not breached this, this section 14, subsection 1 of the Nigeria Constitution. They have breached this democratic, the democratic, the democratic principle of this uh, Constitution. The number 2, the subsection for the sub section 14, subsection 2 of this Constitution state, the A state that sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from one government through its constitution, drive its power and authority. The people of Imo State spoke through the said ballot paper. And at the end of the day, somebody who was fought in the election was declared fraudulently the winner. Please, I need time 